Hello everyone, and welcome to Straight Chilling. Each week we watch and review a horror film for your entertainment. You can send all questions and comments to straightchillingpodcast at gmail.com. And don't forget to keep chilling. Shall we straight chilling? Serial killing? Five cold fillers on the mic, got you reeling. Five star ratings from the floor to the ceiling. If you catch a one star, no time for feelings. Got a demon DJ on the ones and twos. By the name El Sabato, don't get confused. So grab a seat by the fire, roast them all over two. And prepare to hear the legend of the straight chilling crew. What up, nerds? Welcome to another scary, evil, super evil episode of Straight Chilling. My name is Bob, and I'll be your host for the evening. This is episode number 217, recorded on Tuesday, May 28th, 2019. Tonight, we're going to be talking about Bright Burn. Before we get into the review, let me introduce everyone else on the show. First up, calling in from Washington, D.C., Randy Gandy G. Landy. Washington is calling in, and it's me. How's it going? It's it's going fine, Honest Abe. Glad to have you. Thanks, man. I'm a little ill, so I'm going to be even less... Uh, I'm make even less sense than usual today. Perfect. Hope everybody's prepared for that. Sipping on that lean. Last but not least, calling in from Southern Korea, my boy Soju. What up? It's Sheva. So, 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 oh, when did you add the like <laughs> the new Reaper pack to your intro? Pop, 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 pop. I thought you were about to <laughs> drop into su, su, Studio Studio Stains. Studio. Dude, studio Remix. Studio Stains. <laughs> contemporary. Stains. <laughs> it's so contemporary. <laughs> so adult. Gentle Mangs. Glad to be back. Glad to be back this week talking about a brand new movie. Um, before we get into it, let's hit the housekeeping real quick. Um, we're getting down to the wire here for the June poll pick. Uh, if you support us on Patreon at the $5 level or above, you can vote on a movie we're going to be talking about this June. The theme for June is Korean horror movies. And the three movies that you can vote between are A Tale of Two Sisters, the Wailing and Thirst. You've got till the end of the month to do it. So go ahead and get your votes in. Uh, the Wailing is still winning. Woo! <laughs> oh, how? Oh. Not my pick. pick. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not Justin's pick. Uh, do we have any new uh, YouTube or Twitch juice? Uh, we don't. So we had a scheduling conflict. So we were scheduled to uh, record on the same day I usually do Twitch, mm. but then that got switched around. So I'll make it up at the end of this week. I'm thinking Thursday night, and I might have to do a double down. I know Joe Bob dropped off, so if I need to pick up on a Friday night too to finish out the game, maybe we'll do like a double down. So Thursday night, I feel pretty confident we'll Twitch then. Friday night, um, if we need to finish up the game. Game, and we're still doing that uh, Bindi and the Ink Machine. So if you want to tune in, if you got that Joe Bob PTSD, hopefully I don't let you down. <laughs> I have it. We can pick back up on Friday night. <laughs> um, but also, more importantly, uh, housekeeping wise, today we're covering a new movie, a new movie that came out in Korea. Oh, so we're shit. Gonna we're going to do another one of those poster giveaways. I'm like putting it up here. It's like covering my camera right now. So this is the bright burn poster we're giving away. You can check it out on YouTube. <laughs> you have to check it out on YouTube if you want this poster. So I'm going to do a little bit better job this time. We have, we're have we going to have two YouTube videos on YouTube. I will label it specifically in the title, Behind the Scenes. So you're looking for the bright burn, straight chilling podcast, behind the scenes video. Go on there, like, subscribe, give us a comment. If you comment on there, I will enter your name, your YouTube name, whatever, on um, in the uh, pick. And so I'll do my little wheel generator thing. I'll have to find that URL again. Give the full URL, you know. I gotta give full there. URL. <laughs> wait, Can't wait little- for... <laughs> So it's essentially just a little wheel. So as many people enter, so I'll put their names in and it just picks randomly. And I will announce on next week's episode who won the Bright Burn poster. So all you got to do is comment on there and you could win this dope Korean poster. It's and it authentico. Help you, 
it, do, it doesn't help you win any prizes, but if you have a uh, an excellent username that goes a long way privately for me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Just indeed. for announcing why. It's a little brownie point for anybody named like Charlie bit my dicks off 99 or some shit. Dicks with an 99. X. 99. <laughs> well, I'm assuming they're a young person. <laughs> oh. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Charlie bit my dick off. Damn. I don't know, man. <laughs> I, ju- fed. I just got the reference. <laughs> I was late on that. Charlie bit uh, me. I'm there. I'm it's there with you. Really, it's really. I don't know why a young person <laughs> would know about that, though. If they're born in that's, 99. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> I just like, I just assume the average age of, of YouTube commenters is somewhere in the teens, in the, the low teens, so. in the, the low 50s, the dad age, the dad realm. Ha- having had a uh, uh, multi million uh, view video on YouTube, <laughs> I can tell you that the same four jokes come out of the same four 14 year olds across the country and across the. <laughs> so. Yeah. And that was episode uh, 205 million views uh, on yeah, no. <laughs> People saw this bullshit. Our lives would be ruined. Dude, probably. The, the sad truth is Andy just posted a random old video of this dude whistling in a really crazy it. way. And then that's what did it. That's so much more popular yeah. than any of our dude, shows. I watched that video like two weeks ago. Yeah, like two, legit, we were like walking down the street, and I was like, "Oh yeah, Andy's video." I watched. You it. show it to your, <laughs> the, the kids in your class to show them what American culture is like. <laughs> I should. That dude <laughs> with should. the fucking mullet and everything. Dude with the fucking mullet whistling without his lips. <laughs> that's that's a like he thing. has lips, but he's not using them. To clarify. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're, I'll get a bunch of the same exact comments uh, just in Korean. <laughs> I'll uh, let you know. Right. Sweet. Yeah, I think that's it for the housekeeping, actually. Um, so definitely join us on YouTube. Get your hands on a sweet, authentic Korean Brightburn poster. That shit is dope. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into what we've been watching this week, fellas. Hey, gang, what you been watching? Uh, Randy, what you been watching? Uh, I watched a few things this week. I've just been kind of like shotgunning through work, and a lot of things are background for me. Um, I rewatched Buster Scruggs last night, which I, I don't know how that movie isn't more widely uh, talked about because it just hits so many of my pleasure points. I love that fucking movie. Um, for those who don't know, it's the Coen Brothers film that was uh, dropped on Netflix in what February, January, maybe, and. Um, it's it's a lot of fucking fun. It's just them going crazy with their character actor friends, <laughs> basically. Um, I also rewatched a little Pin Fifteen in honor of their s- second season being announced. Uh, I've been re I've been not rewatching. I've been watching Band of Brothers for the first time. Have you guys seen that? Oh yeah, dude! Wow, mm-hmm. it's, uh, never have. It's an older one that I just never got around to, but it's pretty yeah. good. It's fucking oh. well-made movie or show rather yeah it's Wait, like it's, a, ba- it's band of brother it's the one where they're in germany or are they in uh they're like, in europe they're in europe okay because then there's yeah. another one where they're in asia where they're in the like pacific like dealing with japan so follow it up they're both great they're both are great. they like related like in terms of I, I, I think so i think so i mean it's like very much the same side it's just on the other side of the world so well it's a but, pretty damn good show they have like interviews with yeah. in these like like platoons going on in the in world war ii and things they start off every show with some interviews and then kind of just roll into it and it's just really like good fucking filmmaking honestly um i threw on some c lab 2021 recently it's been a nice while. throwback it's a bit as ridiculous as i i remember it from when i was in fucking middle school and adult swim like became a thing um very much in love with rewatching that and in that same vein also rewatching another childhood favorite or rewatching another childhood favorite which was austin powers the spy who shagged me <laughs> nice i i was shocked at how perfectly perfectly distilled and m- memorized i have that whole fucking movie Dude, i must have yeah. watched and times i guess i thought i only saw it a few times but i'm watching i was like i could recite the whole goddamn thing it's like when you're you know, like i don't know like when you watch lion king as a child so many times on vhs that you can you know every second it's the exact same feeling i'm like holy shit like 
this show, this movie should not have been a movie I watched at that age, really. There's like fuck ton of sexual prom. Like, yeah. Uh, shit in there and just like it's it's like the perfect middle school movie because it's adult enough humor to where you feel like an adult for laughing at it even though it's just like drinking shit out of a coffee mug and stuff like that <laughs> and in uh, at the same time it's 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 soft, like in that same vein it's sophomoric enough to where you get it <laughs> you know so i don't know it, it just reminded me of being in middle school honestly i'm in the same boat as you randy and do you remember a few years ago we popped it on at your house i think we were drinking we? like your parents house and we were watching <laughs> it but I, they were like out of town or something but uh, like you were an adult maybe it was when uh, you got back from listen. university or, so, or something i don't know but Man, we were losing our shit. That movie holds up well. I think. Like, well, I mean, it's a really watching- dumb movie. So yeah, it's, <laughs> it but is, but it, it holds up well from my memory. You right. know, like when things come. You know, the nostalgia um, factor is very strong, and it's sure, like, yeah. And it's also like it's the first of the like sequels, so it does that same thing that Wayne's World Two did, which is recycling the same joke, just with a slightly altered twist like instead of uh, a, a satellite that looks like titties it has a rocket that looks like a wing <laughs> yeah. like, just just the <laughs> bottomest of the barrel jokes and i loved it growing up so i love it now by de facto so nice. that's me <laughs> cool cool juice what you been watching eyebrows? Dude, I um I rewatched Guardians of the Galaxy and it's been a while. I don't think I've seen that movie um in a hot minute. That's like I I don't know, man. That might be the best Marvel movie that's made. It's like one of the closest things like to kind of capturing that OG feeling of Star Wars, but with its own kind of twist on it. I don't know. I like I, as far as like a space yeah, like as far as like a space movie goes and like oh, okay. the like like group dynamic and like how they like I don't know. I think it's um and I think they even try to follow I know like in the second Guardians they kinda like do the whole split up thing like they do in Empire where one group goes this way, one group. So I mean like uh, but that first movie, it's like really, really great. And um I also rewatched I'm still on that Korean kick, watching Korean uh movies, horror movies. And um, I had seen this movie before. Maybe I think we casted it. I would love to like kind of recast it. Actually, it's uh, the host. The host. Um, yeah. It's like an old school. I think Rickety picked it like way back in the day. Like maybe in the top twenty episodes, maybe or like the first that twenty. Right. Yeah. Early. Um, it was like real. So it's been a while since I'd seen it, but it's like funny watching it now. So I'm like fucking living in Korea and we like covered it so long ago. And, um, and like the dude runs like the snack shop and like the family dynamic and just kind of understanding maybe a little bit more of that is pretty cool. But that movie holds up well as well. The, I mean, the monster is like a cool design, but it's got that CG and it's like from 2006. I think that's its biggest. I would love if it like could get some kind of update or whatever because like the movie otherwise Call George like, Lucas up <laughs> <laughs> holds up like hey, really well. and the thing is it's like good enough that it like does it certainly doesn't ruin the movie or whatever but I mean it's definitely like stands out You're like oh you know but um but I, I I don't know I really like that movie as well I've been going through the Korean horrors getting ready for next month and the host the host is a good one if you haven't seen it I definitely recommend you check it out Sweet deal. I I checked out a couple movies this week. Uh, the first one I want to talk about is a little movie called Slugs from 1988. Uh, it's a little slice of fried perfection. Slugs. 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 What year was it? 19, yeah, what year? Uh, the year of our Lord, 1988. Ah, the year of our Lord Goth Bob. <laughs> <laughs> something, like so, something like that. So uh, this this movie <laughs> is dumb in a really really perfect kind of way. Like, so these slugs they're very tiny. They don't move fast. However, like giant hordes There's of them. There's never been a sentence that started that way that ended badly. <laughs> <laughs> we got some slugs, eh? 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 They just like it's not even leeches. It's slugs. They just slime shit. What's going on? They're like people just hanging out. There's not a slug in sight. And then they'll just like 
<laughs> take a step and then they're covered in slugs <laughs> and they're, they're getting eaten alive by these slugs that definitely are just taped to their body and not moving at all. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they're just like, you know, covered Damn. in blood screaming and rolling around, but there does have these, these little black felt things that are taped on them. Clearly it's, it's fantastically oh, dumb. Is this, is this one of your? Is this your weekly vinegar strokes, Rob? We need to check I in. No. you had another vinegar stroke. This you know? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> you have a vinegar stroke, Bob. <laughs> Come clean. <laughs> this is actually an Arrow video release. Um, oh, okay. Whoa. However, the oh, high end. the vinegar syndrome sale was this Friday, and I made some purchases. So I'll be talking yeah. about how many, Bob? We're we're <laughs> logging it down for the. <laughs> Intervention. Can't wait, can't wait we need you to, to come know. visit this week with no money. I, <laughs> <laughs> I purchased seven films over the, the seven. The sale. Bob, yeah. that's yeah. not even Bob, half the price, whole month. Half price at that. Those prices is still a lot of fucking money. <laughs> that's crazy. It's uh whatever you know. I'm doing research <laughs> for the show. You got blood harvest, I'm didn't you? <laughs> I did not. That movie's terrible. Yeah, well. Not a big fan of Blood Harvest. Never stopped you before, Bob. The marvelous <laughs> Marvel. Um, but never slug- stopped before. Slugs is a uh, is good fun, and I, I, it's really it's got a really solid score, and it's super gory and uh, fun. So I don't know. Check here's your um, here's your homework for for that, Bob. You got to go on uh, Amazon Prime, and they have a little film called Ticks from 1990 starring uh one sir seth green and one sir alfonso ribeiro so you know it's great it's great um and it's sold not, it's not great <laughs> <laughs> i want to make sure that you understand that when i say it's great i mean it's great the way the slugs is great i love it <laughs> I rob's blowing all our patreon money on his vinegar stroke god <laughs> damn rob the coffers aren't your personal piggy bank that is not <laughs> even close to true clarence carter <laughs> Not even close to true. Don't listen to these lies. Um, I also watched a new, a new movie that was dropped on Netflix called The Perfection. Um, have you guys seen a trailer for this? Are you familiar with it at all? I have. Um, I've seen like I've seen it from like Netflix trying to shove it down my throat as they do. Yeah, we have a new movie. <laughs> Watch like, it, okay. please. Watching the host. Calm down. Yeah. <laughs> This uh, this movie is listed as a drama horror thriller. Um, it's directed by Richard Shepard. I was I was talking uh, to Anthony from our buddy Anthony from uh, something ghoulish um, about this movie a couple days ago. So we both watched it and it just came out and we were just talking about it or whatever. And as we started recording this episode, he sent me a text message. It flashed across my across my phone and it just said. I just told Richard Shepard that you hated his movie, <laughs> which Damn. is which is not true, by the way. I didn't hate his movie, but also that's hilarious, and I really want to know exactly how he responded when Anthony told him that. Um, they, probably so, something along the lines of, "Okay, I guess we're done." <laughs> <laughs> well, fuck those guys. They're clearly uh, don't know shit. Yeah. No, this movie. Uh, let- this movie's a good He's Netflix not. movie. You know, like it's not like if I paid 10 or 12 bucks to go watch it in the movie theater, I don't know that I really would have liked it as much, but for like throwing it on and it being like, I don't know, the plot develops in a way that was surprising and also like satisfactory, I guess it, it had some, some stuff going on. Um, and I was like, Oh, Got this that lukewarm Netflix deal. Kind of. It's, it's, it's a little bit better than I mean, lukewarm. That's Netflix, man. Sometimes <laughs> the shit sticks to the wall. Sometimes it does not. Yeah. I mean, literally, like, every, like, Netflix horror movie is like that. It's like, eh, it's got some good things, but, yeah. like, do I want to watch it again? Nah. Will I forget about it in, like, two months? Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's that's <laughs> kind of how I feel about it, I guess. It's it's not... I mean, that's it. That's the formula. Not bad, but not good. I think... I would recommend it. It's on Netflix. I'd recommend throwing it on if you're trying to find something new. It's not particu- particularly scary. It's more like a... I'm more of a thriller, I guess. I don't, I don't even know that I'd call it a straight-up horror movie, but it's got some psychological stuff going on, some manipulation, uh, and it definitely has some twisties and some turnies. So, yeah, it's... Manipulation. It's, 
you say? I do. Yeah, there might it's be a, a cooter. cooter of a movie. Might be. A, yeah, kind of. Oh, it's a. It's sounding kind of cootery. Manipulation, manipulation. Uh, but that's pretty much all I've been watching. Uh, just those two and Brightburn, of course. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into the main event and uh, talk about Brightburn. Randy's trolling me. Uh, let's go ahead and kick it I off. Wanna mi- I want to mention, if you're watching the behind-the-scenes video on YouTube, unfortunately, it doesn't show Randy's trolling. He'll troll us oh. with like, little emoticons, I know. But if you ever see the blue pop up on my face, it's just Randy trolling with his little <laughs> emo- emoticon. No. <laughs> just like that. There it is. Look at that. <laughs> He often does it, but it, for, it doesn't show up on the video, unfortunately. Sorry, world. You're just going to have to imagine that pithy emoticon. It's, they're all so pithy. All right, let's, uh, let's kick it off with the back of the box. What's on the back of the box? The back of the box that hasn't been made yet. Um, so <laughs> Brightburn from 2019 is a horror sci-fi movie coming in at 90 minutes, uh, directed by David... Yaravesky, and it's written by Brian Gunn and Mark Gunn, which I think, I think Brian is James Gunn's brother and Mark is his cousin, or vice versa. They're, I don't know, one's a brother, one's a cousin. Um, so the plot synopsis is, young guns. is uh, as follows. What if a child from another world crash landed on Earth, but instead of become a, becoming a hero to mankind, he proved to be something far more sinister? What if? Like a Mormon? Oh, <laughs> far uh, more sinister. Sorry, well, Mormon. What's that? Uh, kidding. What's that? Zenu? Yeah, we Zenu just guy? trying to piss like every group you know, off. Just really, <laughs> just really gunning for the world. I have no idea why. <laughs> Pun intended. French people we have said on this cast. <laughs> Call me Rob last <laughs> week. <laughs> Pills and I help the famous cause in a few episodes yourself. <laughs> really just alienating uh, all, all beasts. We've got a lot of Russian we listeners. We said some things about women. No, we like have. We oh. love them. Oh, okay, yeah, we have. We have said that. Um, so th- <laughs> this movie, Bright Burn, going into it, what were you guys thinking? Were you stoked about it? Did you not care? And, Randy um, was excited. Would Let you me tell you how would, Randy felt? Would you recommend people <laughs> go to I the don't. theater to check it out? Uh, Juice, why don't you kick us off? Um, yeah, I was intrigued by this premise for sure. Um, the fact that they were like weren't didn't even seem to be hiding that they were doing this super like evil Superman. So I was like kind of waiting for them to maybe like pull the rug out from it because I was like, man, they're just like going full by like in the trailers and everything. And um, so I was that was like really intriguing to me because I was like, how are they not getting sued? First of all, like how how is this working? Because I thought even maybe DC was kind of pulling it like, oh, this is going to be our new train of thought, but different studio so i don't even know how they kind of pulled this off without getting sued um but they did and they're that i mean it is what it is there's no like twisty or anything it's evil superman so um yeah i i mean i would recommend going to the theater to see it um i um i thought it was pretty solid um not nothing crazy but yeah it was good let's get a little horror flick for the summer cool randy what about you um, I wasn't terribly excited for this movie. It was, I mean, I guess it's kind of an interesting premise, but the idea of a movie that's just like, it's, it's very obvious what it's going for from the, from the word jump. Like Justin said, like it, it never did really like subvert what you, what the advertising said it was, which, you know, that's not necessarily a, a, a bash on it, but it just seemed kind of light in my mind. Like, okay, Superman, but bad, but is there actually going to be anything you know worth watching besides just the spectacle of bad superman and um i would say that it it does a little bit like it it makes an honest effort i would say to sort of like give you um a core an emotional core and uh, a through line for you to follow i don't think it just and maybe it's you know by design but it just doesn't seem to aspire much more than that so like if you're you know looking for a movie that's got a little gore that subverts an american icon um while artfully dodging his name constantly um <clears throat> then you know you could do a lot worse than this movie it's uh it's an original take but it's like i, I like i you know i love that original movies are getting made 
when they happen to get made even when when i say original it's kind of uh not so much you know it's kind of a clearly delineated thing that they they're just subverting an expectation on and they don't really go be much beyond that but um they do make an honest effort to sort of at least ground it in some some characters that you can follow along with so i give them that uh you could do a lot worse horror in the theaters you could do a lot worse Cool. Yeah, I it feel ain't, it ain't Winchester. <laughs> Thank the Lord. <laughs> Woo! I feel uh, kind of similarly. I was pretty excited going into it, especially knowing that like James Gunn had a hand in it, and um, you know I'm down for some evil kid Superman, whatnot. Let's 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 get in there and get messy. And it just kind of Super like Mang. Super Mang. It kind of uh, I don't know. It never it never evolved past that whole like. You know, you're having a, a drink with your buddy at the bar and you're like, you know, what if they made a movie about like a shitty mean Superman? And they're like, yeah, that'd be fucking cool, right? <laughs> and then it never really got any further yeah, than that. Yeah, you just write it over a beer in yeah. an afternoon. Yeah, it's on a napkin well, much, and then they yeah. just made that into a movie. Um, but still, yeah, it's, it, was, it was fun and I think it's still worth a watch. You're not going to have, you're not going to blow your load on it or probably, um, maybe you will, but uh, Rob, there's a lot of people out there. Somebody, could, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it, that's it, the it, thing. Some somebody will like lo- absolutely sure. love this movie, so and they would be thing. wrong for it. I th- oh yeah, <laughs> no. It's kind of like it's one of those movies that sort of hits in such a way that if you're predisposed to like it, you'll like it, and if you aren't, yeah. then you're probably going to forget about it. <laughs> Except we're about to tell you why you're wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no opinions are opinions man i don't know i, I hope a ton of people Until love this they're movie wrong. oh god uh, um so yeah that's uh that's pretty much it though i kind of i think we all feel probably pretty similarly on this one but i'll go ahead and drop the spoiler warning and uh we'll get into it here we go spoiler warning spoiler warning all righty superman superman all right <laughs> So little little shitty kid, or I guess he starts off as an okay shitty kid. kid. <laughs> <laughs> now I mean, <laughs> the little, sh- little they, they, shitty kid. I mean, they <laughs> the thing about this movie is they play into every beat that you expect, and then maybe they throw some things that are like maybe kind of not. I'm surprised they took it to a certain level. Like there are certain okay. things that happen that I was like, oh shit, like they went there. Yeah. Um, and I was pleased by that. But as far as like what you're expecting, as far as the story goes, it is that. It is that to the end, from yeah. the beginning to the end, you could probably go into this movie knowing what this movie is going to be. <laughs> like, I like, mean, to, I, it's almost like it's it's the tired old trope of you know twist endings and all that stuff. But this movie does not even deign, does not even like faint as if it was going to to subvert the expectation. It just it's it's a very predictable movie. But for you know what you're getting, it's still fairly enjoyable. I would yeah. feel like. One thing that this movie did that kind of just kind of irritated me was like pretty much right out of the gate. Um, well, the first thing you see is uh, Mon Pa Kent, whatever Elizabeth Banks and Roy from The Office's names are in this movie. <laughs> the Brayers. The Brayers. Yeah, yeah, he gets the Brayers. Mon Pa Kettle, whatever. They uh, they are interrupted in, in their sexy times by a alien spacecraft in their barn or out in the woods, I guess. And they find a baby in it. And then it's like 13 years. Later. Yeah. So yeah, they, yeah, they do like the opening credits where <clears throat> they are able to do like just a quick speed through of, Oh, him growing up, he's a baby. And then they do, he's two and then he's like five and stuff like that. So, um, you don't spend any time like them coddling this kid or anything. It's really just kind of like a quick, like, Oh, we're going to get him to the age of, I like to, he has a birthday. What is he? 12 or 13? Yeah, he turns 12. So I have a question about, about this. Um, yeah. So this kid, so he turns 12 and then the next, uh-huh. the next like big thing that happens in the movie is his spaceship. Like his parents are hiding his spaceship in the barn, right? The the spaceship yeah. sort of comes and he alive. Know it's there. Yeah. yeah. And the spaceship sort of turns on or whatever, and it starts transmitting the signal to the kid. And he sort of wakes up in the middle of his sleep, and his eyes are red, and he's getting this weird alien uh, 
language in his brain and you don't know what it's saying at first but it turns out it's saying take the world i think is what it says yeah it, so, something yeah. like that yeah and it's almost like uh he starts doing these bad things against his will when uh when he's like hearing this crazy language in his brain and it, so so if he was sent assuming that he was sent to earth with the intention for him to dominate it, basically take it over. Like, why would they send an infant baby and then just like wait 12 years Here, for him to grow here's up? The thing. Here, here's the thing. This movie is not particularly subtle and I don't think they're like trying yeah. to be Are you talking about the bees and shit. Yeah. So that yeah, at, pissed me off. at the beginning of this movie, they, they play and they play it off like, oh, we're giving you some character development. Like, oh, he's the smart kid in class and like he's, he's yeah. different or whatever before he turns he's evil. Bullied. Yeah, but they like the teacher does this whole thing there in like science class, and she's like, "Here's some bees, and here's some wasps. What are the difference?" And of course, nobody says anything until like this kid P- Superman pipes up, and he's like, "Oh, bees do this, and wasps do this," and he's like, "There are even some wasps that what he said they've lost the ability to make their own." were their own nest and so Nests, but they're yeah. super they're super strong so they essentially like make other wasps raise their young for them before d- essentially destroying them yeah. so like straight out of the beginning of this movie they're like just like laying everything out for you but like right. oh it's hidden like in like a pseudo character development but it's, it's essentially i mean that's what like, i that's what i took from it because i was like gotcha. okay this is not some like yeah, that, like that whole thing really irritated me because it was like it's like calling your shot in the most obvious way possible, but pretending like you're not being obvious about it. You know, what I mean? yeah. it's like it's like it's almost like I feel, and I could be wrong. Maybe they meant everybody to get it, but I feel like the intent there was to be to have some subtext to what he's talking about, but it is not subtext to me. It was like okay, so I've seen the trailers for this movie, and I know it's Superman, but bad. So that explains how Superman, but bad. There you go. Another one of the things, another one of the, like, I guess problems. So I had the question about like, why the hell are they like waiting for this kid to grow up for a domination? That kind of at least answers my question. And they actually like uh, the filmmakers obviously thought about that with the whole, like I'm a wasp child analogy, (laughs) but like I, I'm a wasp in a bee nest. Buzz, buzz. I think my biggest problem my biggest problem with this movie is similar to my biggest problem with just the actual character of Superman in that like, so we've got this like evil little kid. And as soon as that like switch is flipped, like he's just pure fucking evil. He's like not really conflicted at all. And when he starts killing his family, like his parents that like raised him and loved him and nurtured him and stuff, there's just like no real conflict there. And I think that's like such a major swing and a miss because there's, there's so much opportunity to build like drama and tension and have him like really not being able to control like, his actions and killing his mom who like loves him so much. And that's like the biggest, most successful thing in this movie is the parents and like how they show their love more the mom than the dad. The dad's kind of like, yeah. I, I'm on to this little well, shit. I'm on to you. Well, well that's it. Th- that's a thing. Not only I agree with you that that was a huge miss, but I think everything that you're talking about is a huge miss as far as like they like they don't put a whole lot of there's not a, a lot of emotional or depth to any of these characters yeah. or any kind of like development yeah. to any of these characters. What these characters are at the beginning of this movie is what everybody ends up at the end of this movie. There is no character development, even for the Superman. It's literally because the ship is telling me what to do. And they do just a little bit of conflict at the very, very into where he's like where you think maybe because he's like mom i want to do good but even like you don't I don't even feel conflicted because they do this whole like video thing at the beginning where you watch him growing up and there's nothing to that and then you see him for like two two minutes at the beginning of this film oh i'm bullied at school and i'm the smart kid yeah. okay and then and the then he's, and powerful. Then he's yeah. evil like yeah, you really thing. don't get to see him like be a, a normal kid for very long no. so you don't like and and so like there's not yeah like the, the lack his lack of internal conflict is a 
problem in terms of story beat although i do kind of like see a value in doing it that way and just follow me here because like this is me trying to like apply subtext to this movie that may or may not be there but for starters you've got a story about a like this is uh we need to talk about kevin all over again this in is some ways. a story of a that girl <laughs> yeah it's, it's a story <laughs> of a girl try to ever finds an alien mm-hmm. and it turns out <laughs> evil um no yeah but th- it's that story of a mom who is like hopelessly in love with her kid um it's a miracle baby situation yeah yeah but the kid's turning out to be a shitty person and she can see it and the kid abuses her and abuses like abuses everybody um but in really subtle enough ways to where he kind of gets away with it or it's the good be son off as kids being kids. it's yeah, macaulay culkin son. yeah it's the it is to even go further back but like on a murder so like on a, on a like a mass murdery world ending cataclysmic level so i can see a value in that being like the idea in those movies i think it's like you only do so much as a parent and it's like your worst nightmare that your kid despite your best efforts becomes a tremendous piece of shit <laughs> yeah. um so i mean to that end i think that elizabeth banks did have some good development because like not not, not a ton so yeah, like on on some level, I see that as as some value, and also I was reminded in this movie of this Chris Gethard bit that he does, which talks about thirteen year old boys and how they're the worst people on earth. Uh, um, yeah, just, yeah, just yeah, 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 <laughs> just inherently shitty people. <laughs> like, which as somebody who me- used to be one, yes, you understand. Um, and so, like that, that, that as, I, as uh, he's and Zari like skit too, where he talks about his cousin. <laughs> What's his cousin's name? Harris. Uh, I forgot. Yeah, Harris. <laughs> Harris. shitty Harris. <laughs> but yes, thirteen-year-old yeah. boys are but just that, pieces of shit. So, like, like I also kind of appreciate that in that, like, thirteen-year-old boys, and this isn't true across the board, and usually it's not true of the like the star of your movie. Is um, you have this. Person, you have people that these kids that are they just feel no remorse about certain things or they don't show it they're very hard leaning into the into the power struggles the power dynamics that they want to establish for themselves so they can define themselves as people and so like to have that but with a superhuman person who cannot be humbled like that i can see a value in that story the problem is like they're they don't ground the kid well enough like we said earlier if you don't have him conflicted at all and his only conflict is like preserving himself like these are like people that have loved him and he obviously loved them back there's evidence throughout this movie of him being yeah. raised in a loving environment reciprocated and then this switch flips and I, you can say like you know it's aliens you can, like it's aliens you can say whatever you want it's true yeah. about how and that that's works fine i mean it's a story it doesn't really work because i don't see him as a like I, as I don't see person, him as yeah. a character. Right? He's really more of a plot device for the parents, and the parents don't really have that big of a shift, except for the mom finally understands the 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 the, the real like problem with her kid and finally acknowledges it for herself. But aside from that, there's really not a lot of development. Yeah, for anybody. I, I agree, and the and I think the problem with this movie is to some of those things like they touch on, so like you see where it could have gone, but everything is so shallow. Like even yeah. you're talking about like okay, he's like self preserving himself, and a lot of it has to do with like his aunt and uncle and like people at school. Like he actually likes his girl and and, and stuff like that. But like even with the aunt and uncle, like even the problems he's facing seem like so shallow. Like, like yeah, like the like they're so superficial. Like these problems that they create, and I almost you know it'd be one thing like okay, like what if the family was like gonna lose their farm, and the kid was like worried for his family, and he was like trying to do good, but he like maybe robs a bank and accidentally kills some, you know, like. The thing is, is like his aunt is the counselor at his school and he's like not showing remorse. So she's going to tell the police. But why is he cost saving measure or something? Yeah. Why is he like scared of the police? Like there's no, it made a little sense with the, the little girl's mom. So I kind of like that a little bit. So he hurts, yeah. he, he hurts this little girl, which was actually pretty cool. He like breaks her hand. 
at school. And that's kind of where the whole big thing comes in is because he's like, um, this is like toward the beginning of his like flip switch. And he likes this girl from the beginning and he shows up in her room. And I thought that was cool. Cause I was, I was like, what would a 12 year old boy do yeah, he with superpowers? You know? Yeah. So he like goes to her room and like turns on some music or whatever, but she thinks it's obviously really creepy because it is really creepy, but he's a 12 year old boy. Like what's he going to do? You know? So he like does that whole Pulling thing. Pigtails on a super exactly and then she's scared of him and then in like facing that rejection he breaks her hand and they show that shit like she grabs yeah. her and, like, like, he breaks he like really fucks it up and so then the mom like acts like you know like a huge piece of shit which is fine because um but she you know like oh you're least. you're trash and you're whatever so he takes his revenge out on the mom that's fine that all makes sense but then they get into this whole conflict of like oh the aunt who we don't even really spend a lot of time with is like the counselor and she has to like counsel him and he like needs to show remorse and she's like I'm gonna tell him you're not showing remorse like I'm your aunt or whatever but I can't go easy on I you. I gotta tell the police and like, like it's not good if you tell them. he's like going and that's straight into like Walter to, White mode. Yeah and then speaking that's of Walter White like, I'm gonna murder you. Yeah what's yeah. what's uh Badger's what's his ass. uncle's name? Badger. That's right. Oh, fucking Badger, <laughs> fucking yeah. Badger. Dude, I like of, that speaking guy speaking of characters with no with no development or nothing allowed to happen to them except just whatever needs to happen to progress the plot. Really. Yeah. Like hey, he's, he's fought. He's a red shirt, which is a shame because I fucking love that actor. His, and, uh, like, his kill sequence was, to see was awesome, man. That's like one it thing was cool. it was that cool. this, right. this movie does correctly is like when it does have a kill sequence, it like kind of leans into it and it doesn't shy away from the gore. Like but his, it does. But, his face There's like a, getting split in half by his steering wheel and it just like lingering on that shot. It's pretty badass, man. I mean, th- that's, that's true. And I, I like for individually taken out of context, I like all of the kills in this movie. I like all of yeah, the, yeah, the me too. for the most part, all of them. all the gore and, and yeah. Like, and the fact that they lean into that stuff, but like even, even the girl's mom who was a, who was a huge piece of shit and like, insulted his parents who he ostensibly doesn't love anymore i don't know kind of tough to tell kind of a problem but there's um, a little bit of it It seems like he still cares for the mom and actually even the dad too see the dad's justified because like you could see the betrayal like in his face and they like start to go off that conflict i felt like they could have leaned into the dad being more like against the kid from the beginning so there's always kind of this conflict you know where the mom like really is like oh the baby and we got it and the dad's like "Mm, like like." the only thing that's supposed to change in the paradigm of superman in this is this kid's origins and intentions yeah everybody else like that i think they took extra pains to make sure that everything else the circumstances were exactly the same as Superman. That's true. That's true. Um, so and so, both his parents are good, salt of the earth people out there, you know, doing their shit. Like, and, I don't know. I forgot what I was saying earlier, but this whole thing sort of. Oh, the, the woman, like the 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 little girl's mom. The way that he like he gets pissed off at this girl and he breaks her hand and shows no remorse for it out of the gate. No, not remorseful at all for breaking her hands. Like sometimes yeah. bad things happen for a good reason. It's like, Oh, because you snuck into her room and she didn't love it. Like, <laughs> okay. Like you fucking shithead. But to, to then translate that into, okay, well I'm going to kill your mom. And not only that, the first person I'm ever killed is you're going to be your mom. Uh, I'm ever going to kill is going to be your mom. And it's also going to be the most brutal kill of all time. I'm going to yeah, eviscerate. <laughs> Like it goes well, really no, brutal a- really quickly for a kid. And I, you can say that that's the alien switch turning on and like all remorse is gone. All like his, his prime directive has changed all that stuff. But like, it's tough as a, as a viewer to buy that or to, to, to sympathize or to be on board with the transition when the transition is so sudden and so strong and the pendulum just swings and stays in that corner, the whole rest of the goddamn movie. There's no, like, there's one moment where he's like, you know, I want to do good things. Like, yeah, well, you just fucking sh- like laser beamed your dad's head in half. So, <laughs> like, you're you failed already. Like, if you cared at all, like, you probably wouldn't have done that, even with the betrayal, even with the betrayal. Like, I, I just don't. 
you don't i don't think i'm in this kid's head at all i really feel like he's a walking plot device and it's a shame because they spend a lot of time with this kid and i really think they could have pushed him further well and even if they want to lean into like the alien aspect like oh he's an alien you're not supposed to relate to it some things i feel like they don't deliver on that either i feel like they're shallow either anything's like shallow like oh we're going to introduce you to a character or they introduce you to like a plot device that they never deliver on like for instance you talked about how brutal the kill with the mom was one thing that they introduced at the beginning is like the mom and dad like find some pictures under his bed and at first it looks like it's like porn or whatever like oh he's like jacking off or something it's like just it's just like pictures of girls like in there like bathing suits like oh haha he's a 12 year old kid but then it like starts to get to like like surgeries or like of open bodies and you're like oh and they're like oh what the fuck is this and it's like um like really fucked up it's like organs and stuff like that and then at the end of this movie that's what he does to the mom you see and that like i love again that they lean into like the brutality and the gore in this movie but he has essentially like harvested the mom like near his spaceship and like she's ripped open but the, you have no idea why like why like is he harvesting organs is he like eating her is he like I think that's you just have... supposed to imply the impulse he's made good on those impulses that were hinted at before yeah but, but I guess, yeah it's the why. same yeah, problem it's like, like no you don't... like there's no it's, it's like oh there's something it's... alien going on here there's something foreign but like it's like there's no like there's nothing it's just a plot device it's literally just to have some crazy gore which is cool because it looks nuts and you're like oh shit this kid is like really (laughs) fucked up but you don't know like why or he's not just killing people he's terrorizing them yeah so like this is not you know and you can be pissed off but like he's still like i don't know it's tough to get it's just tough to put yourself in the shoes of this kid on any level and therefore it's tough for you to watch most of this movie and be on board with it because it seems like kind of out of nowhere that he would not just you know he would break the girl's hand on accident maybe and then have like a a crisis for himself but no that doesn't happen instead he just decides to brutally terrorize and murder her mom and cut her open like that and then that also is never followed up on. You never see that little girl again. You never like the only thing you hear is that she's clammed up about the whole affair, which I guess is a she's resolution. Like terrorized or whatever. One yeah. thing, and, you know, maybe I, well, one thing I read online was about that little girl. There was like an alternate ending that they were kind of kicking around. I don't think they ever actually shot it, um, but they were going to, oh, really? they, they talked about potentially ending the movie um, with her basically uh, turning into a superhero, like so, uh, Caitlin, Caitlin's a character's name. I was trying to remember her name. Uh, so they were okay. they talked about like showing her um, in like a lab of some sort, fastening a robot arm onto her broken arm, and that was like going to be sort of the ending of the movie and I guess potentially setting up a conflict for the part two or whatever, but they never, I don't think they ever did that. (laughs) I'm okay with that. Yeah, I'm glad they didn't shoot that. Yeah. But the fact that they still kind of have the remnants of that, of a setup for something just kind of sits weird because after like when we finally see that her mom like cut up and underneath the floorboards of the barn, it's like you had forgotten that that character even existed by that point. You're like, oh shit, yeah, okay. And, I had to uh, think about just, who it was. Yeah, that's, that's right. Right. It's just it doesn't. I don't know. It, it's really the kid's journey that bothers me in this. The mom's journey makes a kind of sense. The dad's journey makes a kind of sense. Yeah. The other characters are pretty much red shirts uh, in some capacity, but the kid who's the main focus and probably gets the most airtime, except for maybe Elizabeth Banks, he just like it. it just it's so. Like it, it, again, it reminds me of. We need to talk about Kevin. Have we got, either of you guys seen that movie? No, no. Okay. Well, I don't know if you guys want spoiler alert on that or not. Do you care, Randy? Don't tell me. <laughs> okay. Well. Okay. So it's a similar <laughs> like fob, like a mother son yeah. scenario, and it's very dangerous or whatever. And the kid is shown as no remorse. He's acting really fucked up. And, you know, there's just nothing she can do about it. And to like in that movie, it made sense like that. He is nonsensical and we're following Tilda Swinton's character around as she sort of like grapples with all this stuff and tries to still love her son despite his faults. But like all that stuff kind of falls flat because in that case, it really seems like it's a mental disorder or there's something that she's just not scratching the surface hard enough on. But in this, we know from the beginning exactly what's wrong with this kid. He's a fucking alien. And we're yeah. just supposed to skip all this like 
like instantly bizarre behavior to that instead of having it be a, a an origin story for somebody like you might as well have just had a brain implant that started blinking when he turned 13 and that would have yeah. had the same effect yep. as the rest because what if when he and i don't like, necessarily mind that if because like okay last week we talked about a movie where we're not supposed to relate with the character you know like a fucking nick cage you know he's a huge piece of shit but there's got to be somebody and same thing with kind of like american psycho i guess like like i guess they like and here's the thing they try and that's the problem is everything that they do is very shallow i think that they try to add some conflict in the um in the movie like when he's destroying the house i think he like actively like doesn't kill his mom because he kills (laughs) he kills the police immediately so at the very end of this movie like he's he's killed his dad and he's going off the rails and his mom knows he killed the dad and um she's in the house and he's just like crashing through the house and he's screaming while he does it and then cops show up like at the house and he like completely like slams into one that was cool because that dude like explodes like shows yeah like the kid is going and she's like that. Yeah. So that was really cool. And then how did he kill the other woman? Like really brutally, he just like whipped her around a lot. Oh then, yeah. He yeah. like, you saw the shadow in the background. He was just like fucking Hulk. He's just wailing bitch. on her. Yeah. yeah. And he was like slinging around the hallway. And she got tore up. And then so Elizabeth Banks like gets in the house and he even sees her. He's like flying in the sky and he sees her and he's like super fast. We've seen and he like lets her go or whatever. And then at the very end, like he does this whole thing like, mom, I want to do good. Like there is some conflict there, but they never really deliver on it. And that's the thing. It's like just saying he's (laughs) just saying it. If he was just a huge piece of shit, like if he was like a Patrick Bateman or if he was like this, then that's fine. Then like at least give you know elizabeth banks more depth and like like you said have us follow her around or like the dad and like their relationship and maybe their conflict more like okay or make us feel bad like when the uncle dies like give us more time with that uncle and how he's a loving uncle or like something like the every there's sh- it's just so shallow everything they do in this movie whoa bob making drinks yeah making drinks <laughs> make me one will you um yeah, I know, bob like, it's over just there. Like to some extent, I like I get what they're going for. It just kind of it's really more an issue to me. I think that it falls flat. Like I understand what they're trying. Like th- they're doing, like you said, the same thing where you have a kid that's like a, a character that's the central character that's kind of going insane, and then the the other central characters are just kind of rolling with it. They're yeah. trying to like trying to get figure out, and you, they have at least a human pathos for us to follow. But the fact that he switches so quickly is so bizarre to me just can't really get past it and it's like if you're gonna do that like i can i can like thinking about it now i can see what progression they're going for they're trying to set a show like because at first the kid like doesn't even know what he's doing he's like well where am i like yeah, when he gets, yeah like, he wakes he's up, like sleepwalking yeah. like a like any sleepwalker and you know and that's fine, all well and good and then he like for some reason like puts his hand in a fucking lawnmower and realizes he's super strong oh yeah when shit he like throws that, like, that lawnmower that's, that's all like clear across the yard that shit cracked me up that was funny <laughs> it was funny I, I did i enjoyed that part but but like that the progression they're going for is like okay so it's this is the discovery of powers this is toby mcguire figuring out he shoots webs and and then the next part would be him like tr- struggling to understand how to use these powers, which he kind of does. But he starts like once he realizes that he has this power and that he's special in that way, I can like I think that what they're trying to show is like, OK, 13 year old boys are terrible. So his natural impulse is like, well, I am superior. I'm factually superior. I don't just believe it. I yeah. am. I can stop. I can do whatever the fuck I want. So why would I put up with all this stuff that annoys me with my teenage test, teenage hormones? But even that doesn't really work because he fucking like he, he's like people that he actually cared about at some point or another. He has no conflict with with just yeah. murder. Earlier, he was given a gun by Badger, his uncle Badger, and you know he's you know, like super excited to get it. His dad gets pissed at him for giving it or whatever. But like. Uh, there's there's seeds of a real relationship there that you could show and then show him being like i can't let you go to the police and yeah. being conflicted about having to stop him and then overdoing it because he doesn't understand his powers yet and I then think, eventually like that's the having thing. that it just doesn't you're like, it right needs to gradually become well they didn't people. pick 
they didn't pick one they do the both and you're right you're exactly right they do he's an alien and he can't control it and so he just goes buck wild but then they also like say like oh he's a teenager and he he has the whole superiority complex it's like right. you know like pick one and like develop that but they, or, or they like one try to, to dance or like yeah yeah they try to dance between the two is without ever or yeah is without exactly decided to control himself this way and it's both by the end he's decided to be uh lex luthor brain and superman body or whatever uh he and you know that should be the final decision of this movie that makes sense that's where it was progressing from the beginning yeah but the way they get there is so counterintuitive to how you think of any character and i mean you can say that's alien logic for you and i can't argue with it yeah. but but that's like, lame humans wrote, humans <laughs> wrote is, the story yeah. like exactly this isn't and it's written for it's humans it's not deep sci you have to have so that like emotional core. Invest. Yeah, exactly. With I don't even feel like it would have been that hard. It, I like no, it's they right there. Give you some of that. Yeah, like they didn't they need to have. This. Yeah, they didn't need to have the ship tell him what to do at all. Like it's so easy to create a conflict in a twelve-year-old boy who has superhuman god that you don't need a ship to control. He You're can right. he can kill his uncle and feel bad about it. Like yeah. he. he can do something by accident he can a girl's wrist and feel bad about it he exactly can like he can feel bad about it and have it's so easy for it to snowball out of control like oh shit the cops are after me i need to like stop them oh shit i, I exploded them right. like i don't know how fast <laughs> i can go like that's fine like that's because you that's, can still do that's all the of human it thing. Yeah. That's the human thing that it's missing. Like, I, like I know he's not human. I know that's part of the point. But if you're trying to make this metaphor of puberty and the way that teenage boys think being like malignant and horrible, yeah, that it is. Which it but is. It's <laughs> also rooted in a real person. Every evil person, every piece of shit that's ever walked the earth for the most part, at least in like, say, modern American society, has turned 13 and started doing sh shitty fucked up things for one reason or another. It's not, and they feel conflicted about it while they do it. They don't just like one day wake up and start shooting people. They have a reason for it in some capacity, yeah. rationalize it to themselves somehow to start. And that's what leads them down the dark path. You don't just like, like shoots and ladders your way to the end of the dark path all of a sudden it just story-wise it just doesn't work <laughs> anger leads yeah. to hate okay yeah. you don't just and, go to hate and, like, <laughs> i think they i think they tried to like make elizabeth banks sort of give her the emotional core of this movie which it, like to to the extent that it has one i think she's it she's the close but, yeah she's the yeah. best the closest developed she has yeah. an arc she actually has an arc that's that's not that's yeah. understandable and some capacity but i mean she's frustrating to watch because she does the mom denial thing for so long it's like you can't be this much in denial you just can't Which, like i think it's fine i just they didn't even i didn't think if you're gonna go that route that's fine but like have her like I don't know. Have her maybe go extreme, like hide a body, not hide a body, but you know, like, I mean, she does, I guess kind of hide the journal and stuff like that, but it's more toward the end. I like, I felt like they just were so shallow on every decision they made. It's like, they really couldn't pick a direction and they never leaned to any, they played it like super safe. They're like, we're just going to do this and we're going to deliver on a gore. And they, j it could have been so much better if they had just That's been more decisive. Really yeah. 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 This movie was about the gore and about seeing Superman. Which is unfortunate because it, it feels like it would have been so easy to have it all. Like they give it to you, like, but just a little bit, like just not a, like they it's don't like lean just, into it. Don't she like, I, I could see another version of this movie where Elizabeth Banks is character in the face of this thing, her denial, like just reaches a fever pitch and she just goes full insane, becomes the Renfield to his Dracula and is like helping him like, like cover up his shit or whatever. And then yeah. eventually does something wrong that causes him the power or tripping evil teen at the end of his journey to then kill her and like that i could see happening that that seems more satisfying to me but the fact that he like sticks evil or whatever i don't have a big problem with that i'm kind of glad they didn't go the twisty route and try and like subvert that and just yeah. made it 
arc that Superman would have if he was evil or whatever. That's great. But it's just the path and it's, there's just no emotional core, not one that's strong enough to really help you progress each step of the path. You're really yeah. just kind of jumping to the end a lot of the times. You're like flash forwarding a lot. Yeah. Uh, through Guys, these journeys and there's a uh, there's I know there's there's still a few things we haven't touched on but we kind of need to start laying on the plane and we, we I know we have a bit of a time limit tonight but um let's um let's go ahead and rate this thing out of five um and then we also have a, a surprise recording from a, a a guest we'll get to in a, in a minute here surprise surprise um Juice why don't you start us off man how you feel about Brightburn out of five um i'm gonna give this movie i think it warrants a three um i feel like um i was pleased with some like like i said the gore um i was pleased with the gore and like surprised by it a little bit like when they show like a dismembered like body like all cut up and he breaks a little girl's hand like, like you usually don't see violence against like children and stuff and and they bitched out of that a little bit because there was like a bully at school that like you think is gonna get like his comeuppance but he doesn't so I think they were a little scared of that but um, he does break the little girl's hand he laser beams we didn't like really talk about this but he laser beams his dad like through the head through his eyes which is something they do in Injustice, the video game. He does that to Shazam, to Billy Batson, through his eyes. But like they did it in a movie. I was like, oh, they actually delivered on that. See, laser beams his dad through the face, through the back of the head. Um, what does he do? He picks his uncle's car up and drops it and like fucks him up. He smashes into some cops. He like like throws that other cop around. So that was pretty, like uh, the gore like comes through. He and then eviscerated a, 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 a lady from a restaurant <laughs> yeah yeah yep. and um and even that restaurant scene like i thought was cool they did add the horror element so he busts into this restaurant and like this lady gets some glass in her eye and you can see through like the red so they like there were some good horror elements in this but it ultimately falls flat because they didn't invest anything hardly in the characters or in developing like a story that was like really interesting. It literally was like a paint by numbers. Like the guy starts here and he ends here and it's Superman. Da, 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 da. And, you know, but that's, I literally like could have predicted this movie from the trailer. Like this is how it's going to end. And he ultimately, we didn't talk about, but he kills his mom. He like brings her. Oh, the last kill. He, another, cool kill he like brings her up into the air he's superman and he drops her and then he like smashes into a plane just to kill them and um you know and and so all that's like really brutal and really cool but it doesn't have a whole lot of emotional depth or weight or character development behind it so i don't like care all that much it literally just becomes spectacle um and that can only carry you so far so i'm gonna give it a three star for that i did like how they hinted at the end <laughs> of like the this terrible justice league or whatever they hinted at like and it was fucking oh what's his name what's that rooker uh michael, michael, michael rooker, rooker. <laughs> yeah and i liked that they played into that because like it gave it a little bit of like dark humor like levity like he played it like so goofy and it was almost kind of had like a little bit of that like kind of slither which like was absent throughout the rest of the movie maybe could have used a little more of that but um they like you know the fish man is aquaman and like i guess like that wonder woman she was like a witch or something on that like they do a bunch of things and and then um, uh the martian guy i like that they showed uh oh what's his there was uh, a there's a nod Mars. to uh super that movie that's a james gunn yeah. movie starring rain wilson yeah where he's a super <laughs> rain hero. Wilson one, yeah yeah there was a nod in in that part of the movie with he, apparently crimson he was tide, in it crimson yeah yeah crimson tide yeah something like that <laughs> Yeah, so I don't know. That was kind of cool. And I think that this going forward has a potential for a franchise. Like, there were things like, even that I was thinking, I was like, all right, Superman has like x ray vision. Like, who's he going to be like creeping? You know, I, I feel like there's potential <laughs> for like That's this the first thing like, Teenage Boy should have exactly, done. Exactly. Yeah. True. There's so I feel like there's potential for this to like maybe. Uh, do another one on a bigger scale and i'd be fine with it i would just write like come on give me a little more it's okay to give me like a little depth it's okay to have the spectacle and the depth i would say like i don't know why they kind of bitched out on it a little bit but um but it was good enough and it was entertaining enough so i'll give it a three all right cool uh randy how you feel out of five 
Um, well, let's see. I covered a lot of what I felt. Um, I'm going to say that this, like, I did not particularly care for the way or the way it was shot at the end with, um, Elizabeth Banks's character falling to earth. Like I know what they were going for. They were going for that comic booky shot, but it looks so goddamn silly. And a lot of the CG in this movie looks the CG, goddamn silly. They suffer. The CG yeah. baby in particular. I was like, Oh my God. The, the like in that nightmare sequence with the CG yeah. baby. I don't know even about the, all that. Even like, the laser beams in the head, like it's a cool idea, but yeah. the CG, like, I, mean, was, I was okay uh, with that because what a laser beams look like, like sure, yeah. you know. But like when you're talking about a, I know what a baby looks like. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's not like that. Um, so that kind of ruffled my feathers a little bit. Um, I did not care for the Justice League thing. Well, here's the thing about the Justice League thing they had going on. I didn't really get to even enjoy it, even if I wanted to, because the, the theater that I was in, I was surrounded by this large group of teenage kids, teenage boys, and half of them were sleeping, half of them were talking and on their phones the whole time, really loudly, and it was fucking annoying. They calmed down for a while, and then right at the end, some of their friends came in and were walking in front of me back and forth during the end of the Damn. fucking movie. Like, before the plane showed up, they were walking back and forth, and I was like, what the fuck? is?" And talking to each other, and like, oh, what do we do now? Like... Are you fucking kidding me? Like I was really pissed. Um, so, you know, take that for what it's worth. I just had a bad movie going experience. It wasn't bad beer, bad, but it was a bad movie. <laughs> hey, 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 it's not going to drop, drop the movie like a star and a half. It's not going to affect the I'm gonna, score. But, I'm going to uh, talk you know, about was, my was, beer movie experience w- when I rate it. Okay. We'll get back to that. <laughs> All right. Okay. We'll be back to that. Um, so yeah, overall this, like the, the kid's journey was just too hastily done to me because they really wanted to get to that spectacle of, of the, the gore. And I get that. I just don't think that they laid enough groundwork for me to care about most of these characters. And, and I mean, for my, for my money, like I like movies that are spectacle fine, but this seemed to aspire to more and just fell at it. It just tripped on itself. And as far as like sequels and stuff, no, thank you. Like, I just don't, this was, this was the perfect story of what if Superman was bad and it just doesn't need to go any further. Like there's been a dozen and a half storylines of Superman being evil in the comic books. If I really wanted an extended arc about that, I could find it. I don't need it to be a Hollywood production necessarily. And I don't, I certainly don't need it to follow this movie where I already don't care about the Superman character. (laughs) So I just don't, I just don't want anything to do with that. I think it's funny that they put in like this Michael Rooker as an Alex Jones type and had like these justice league things and had a reference to super. That's all well and good. I have no problem with that. I just, I hope that it's not what people are assuming it is, which is, Oh, it has franchise (laughs) stamped all over it. I I really don't like If they made another one of these movies, I would give it a shot, but there it's pretty slim to none chance that I will get a lot out of it. I'm thinking now, and certainly not if they start trying to introduce new, like fucking super characters or whatever, it just gets to be like, once you once you ex once you, like we already have Watchmen, we already have people pretending to be superheroes, and then the Superman that like, you know, we already have that story that and it works so well for me that I don't really yeah. need to see it done in a lesser way just to see people get eviscerated. I can see people get eviscerated without that. So <laughs> yeah, it's a two point five. The two point five for me, and like like I said, like the, I, some of the camera work wasn't so great, but for the most part, it was good. The acting was pretty good, even though the the, the roles were pretty slight. Even the kid, the kid was a he for what he was told to do, he did a great job. I thought. Um, I just, I just, this movie kind of fell flat for me, and I was really giving it a chance because I kind of. I kind of was walking into it, not expecting to like it. And I was like, okay, I got to set all that shit aside. Try to, try to see what, what, what's so good about this movie. And it just, what was good about it was stuff that you can get elsewhere for cheap, for, for, for less tease, less emotional teasing. Yeah. So I feel you. 2.5. Cool. Yeah. I actually, I agree with you, Randy. I'm going to give this a 2.5 as well. It's, um, it's it's got a lot of the gore. It's got it's got a lot of the fun stuff, the spectacle, but it definitely lacks that emotional grounding, which is what <laughs> kind of separates the men from the boys, right? Like the whole the reason we go to the movies is because we connect, we we feel things. The movies make us feel things. This movie didn't really do that hardly at all. Um, I will say Eliz- Elizabeth Banks did a great job, and she she carried the entirety of the emotional emotional weight of the movie. Really, um, the kid did fine. Um, he was just evil and that's, 
not interesting. Like the the most interesting. He was yeah. a good little shit. I did want to yeah. like sl- slot the shit out of that kid. Like, come on, little <laughs> fucker. The most interesting <laughs> bad guys are the bad guys that can like rationalize why they're bad and they think they're good. Like they they have reasons and like you know they're good in their own mind and that's why that's what makes them con- like conflicting and interesting and human and you know. But it's an alien. Yeah, of course it is. But that's lazy. That's lazy writing is what it is. Um, I, I will say like my favorite part about this movie was like kind of a small little p- piece, but Justin mentioned it. Uh, it it's like um, earlier in the movie where there's like this uh, lady working at a, a, a restaurant and um, the kids like terrorizing her and she gets a, a shard of glass in her eye and they do this like they, they take this like classic horror movie thing where like you you know you oh, watch yeah, Halloween or you watch well, any slasher movie and you, you always see like the killer's point of view like you're looking through the killer's eyes but they kind of turn it on its head a little bit and like you end up looking through the victim's eyes this lady's eyes and she just got stabbed in one of her eyes so like half the screen turns blood red and I just thought that was like a really simple cool thing that I'd never seen done in, in any horror movie before maybe it's been done I, don't know, I haven't seen everything but I've never seen that and I just thought it was like kind of like very simple but like really smart and interesting i don't know i appreciated that it got my uh my yeah, horror my like horror boner too. going yeah it's good um <laughs> damn the cute chai yeah Popping it, that it, vinegar stroke it got <laughs> it got my cute chai going so yeah and i had uh i i had two good beers while watching this movie, I went Ooh, with two good ones. Oh, that's plus one star. I Should went, be a four star then, Bob. I went with a few friends. Mikey went, and when I met up with Mikey, he was already like two thirds lit. And then we just each got a beer and, and took it into the theater. And like halfway through the movie, he just like literally ran down the stairs without saying anything. And I was like, that man is going to go. I make a bad, Uh-oh. bad choice. I don't know what he's going to do. He just brought back this huge tray full of beers, which I didn't even know they had trays I, at the movie oh, theater. I thought he was going to go vomit. <laughs> no, no, no. no. I thought he, he was going to be. He's brought back a whole bunch more beers, and then I spilt a lot of it on me. But oh, Bob. <laughs> shit oh, happens. Oh, minus one stuff. Shit happens. <laughs> no, they were both that's, good that's beers. That's why it's not a four star. It, it got bumped it up, and then it got bumped back down. Uh-huh. Oh, so the seats didn't recline. Minus one. <laughs> they, no, they did recline. It was great. It was a lovely movie okay. movie theater going experience. Plus, half. Plus one. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think we 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 more or less covered it all. Um, so uh, let's uh, let's go ahead and hear from our mystery guest here, calling in. We got Cesar, the old bish. Our uh, comic book guru wanted to weigh in on on some bright burn, and uh, he's gonna he's gonna ask some interesting points that uh, we didn't really touch on because uh, he's a nerd and we aren't right. Right. We're lower casts. We're lower in the we are. system of nerds. <laughs> we, yeah. we have a lot of <laughs> movie nerds before we get to his level. Um, but yeah, let's uh, let's go ahead and hear what Cesar has to say uh, about Brightburn. Here we go. Hey, everybody. It's your pal, your confidant, your fellow horror hound, the old bish. Uh, greetings, first and foremost, to my fellow compatriots at Straight Chillin'. Uh, it's been a while. I'm sorry I couldn't do this in person, uh, but Robbie said, hey, man, hey, we're going to go uh, do Brightburn. Uh, can you be a part of it? Um, due to the nature of the holidays, uh, I could not. Uh, but he gave me the opportunity to sound off via a recording, which is not uncommon. We've had that happen a few times on the show. So figured I'd throw my hat in and why not? Uh, And of course, considering the subject matter, I needed to chime in. First off, Brightburn is not a movie meant to subvert the superhero genre. Uh, If you thought that, you're wrong. Sorry. Eh. No dice, home slice. Uh, But it's from a business perspective, it's a brilliant move. Um, It's also kind of smart to wrap this story up in a nice candy coating that everybody is familiar with. The Marvel movies are popular. The DC movies are DC movies. Uh, But that's not the point. The point is the bad seed. Oh, yeah. We're talking about evil little kids. 
And this is the, the good thing about Brightburn is that this kind of movie has been done a million times before, and usually it always works because psychologically, no one has managed to pin down uh, that that eternal argument of nature versus nurture and it always makes for a good story uh, I'm going to cite some horror movies that uh, we've all probably seen and when I mention them you're going to be like oh yeah Brightburn isn't really all that special but it is in a way um, The Good Son of course The Omen of course uh, even uh, Twilight Zone both the episode uh, where the little boy has godlike abilities and he wishes them away into the cornfield, and the movie where they adapt that exact same story. Um, and more recently, films like The Prodigy. Eh, you know, not really up there, but still that same sort of nature nurture idea. Um, Brightburn's not original, but it is fun as hell. I love that had all the little uh, superhero Easter eggs and nods. Um, the alliteration, that's a classic comic book move. You know, Lois Lane, Peter Parker, Scott Summers, Reed Richards, uh, Brendan Breyer in this movie. And that the in the town square, uh, it wasn't necessarily a town square, it was actually Superman's shield. And I caught that right away. If you watch the movie, um, I don't know why you'd be listening to this before you watch the movie, but hey, if you do, um, check it out when you see like the overhead sort of like drone helicopter shot of the town of uh, Brightburn. You will see where there is a square. It is the it is actually Superman Shield. I think it's also important to mention that. Uh, Superman, when he was created by Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster, uh, started out as a bad guy. Uh, he was not a good person, like more or less uh, a more more like Lex Luthor than uh, what we know as Kal El or Clark Kent. So it was also kind of neat to see uh, all those little nods in the film, and it's funny because you know a guy like James Gunn. Uh, even though he didn't uh, write this film, I know his cousin and his other brother, uh, not Sean, um, was involved in uh, more or less the creative process. These guys, I have a feeling, are one, real big horror aficionados, and two, have to know a little bit about the comics, especially if you're going to delve into uh, very obvious Superman uh, retelling. I mean, for God's sakes, the movie takes place in Kansas and, you know, you basically have Ma and Pa Kent, uh, but they also do such a good job of really honoring the, uh, I guess, the source material without really uh, ripping anything off. Like they kind of made it their own and had fun with it. So I enjoyed the movie. Um, I think it was the perfect length. I think if it was any longer than an hour and 40-something minutes, the characters would have started to get more unlikable, and you would have just been like, okay, now this is stupid. Like, Elizabeth Banks, uh, I liked her performance. Uh, she's always great, and it's not the first time she's worked with the guns, as it were. Um, but, you know, she, she did such a great job, and um, everyone else in the film brought their a game for this <laughs> horror film of sorts so he's always nice to see that sort of thing he's always nice to see really good actors who take the genre serious and on top of that deliver a performance that makes you want to see the movie again and try and see the nuance and all the different uh ways that maybe there was something you missed and you're like oh i didn't know that they said that or i didn't catch that because you were so preoccupied with the visuals of this movie and as far as visuals are concerned i think this movie delivers on a uh, heroic level if you'll excuse the pun brendan Breyer, his actual little symbol that he makes you know that he kind of leaves his calling card at the end of uh, every gruesome murder that he commits uh looks exactly almost identical to superman's uh family crest in krypton like the the letter s or whatever in uh, kryptonian looks almost like a figure eight uh infinity symbol with a little line through it so you know it was kind of like all these little nods i thought were great all the nods at the end where they basically teased the the evil version of the justice league like aquaman is a fish person who isn't like Jason Momoa-like. And, uh, you know, you have a, a crazy woman who, like, 
ties people up and is obsessed with rope. You know, it's like, oh, okay, Wonder Woman. Uh, all of that stuff was outstanding. And the point is, we're probably going to see another movie like this um, creepy kid sort of story in the future. They aren't going away because the argument's not going away. Uh, but the bad seed, by the way, still holds up. I encourage anybody who liked Brightburn, um, if you want to see the ultimate, like, little kid is bad movie, watch The Bad Seed. Um, it's old. It's a black and white film. Uh, if you can get past that, uh, you know, you treat yourself to something that I think will make you your skin crawl. That said, uh, thanks for listening to my crazy ass rant. And uh, I look forward to uh, chopping it up with the guys uh, on a further episode. I'll see you guys later. Man's got his own intro bump. I Fan- know. It's like, Fancy damn, pants. I just got to get on it and like, give me some <laughs> custom music. God. That's his Undertaker music. Just plays whenever he enters the room. <laughs> oh, so that's oh, oh, sure. <laughs> the old bish. He, he comes in style. Great recommendation. Yeah. I want to second that. Mm. Um, yeah. I don't know that like, I don't know that I agree that there's a ton of sub subtext going on here. And he's right that, yeah, you could say it's a nature versus nurture thing, but I just don't see the nurture as being strongly represented in this movie, except by, yeah. you know, or at least it, for what it is, it's entirely on Banks's end. It seems like where she's the one sort of like displaying that, but there's very little displayed in terms of how his upbringing has affected him. Like, and what, what the lessons that she is supposed, they have supposedly imparted on him how they've impacted him at all so i don't know but uh yeah it's oh by the way um he didn't say it in this review but he did text me that his review score is a 2.5 as well 2.5 so, whoa almost across the so board Sorry. that's that's gonna put my the, beer was just too good the aggregate is gonna be a uh, 2.6 on bright burn there which uh which is fine let's go ahead and get into our rotten tomatoes segment and find out what the critics and users think about Bright Burn. Certified fresh to death. Take it away, Juice. All right, let's hop into it. Uh, Ron Smith is going through all kind of changes. So um, let's go ahead. We still got our solid critic um, score, though. I will jump into that one first. Total count from the critics, 120. This is a new movie out fresh this weekend so we'll see um what the critics have to say about that let's go around the table uh i think i picked rob first last time so i'll go randy first what do you think 120 critics have to say about bright burn randy i honestly don't know i gotta think it's pretty middling for them that's just my instinct yeah um probably for the same reasons it's kind of middling for us uh or um, I, maybe i flatter myself but um i'll go with a i'll go with a 75 75 a solid c okay all right rob what do you think yo New superhero horror movie seems like a perfect combination you know for everything people want these days Kind of, yeah. People, I, what they want. <laughs> I think, I don't know. I think critics are going to look at this and be like, you know, it's 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 not a Marvel movie. It's not trying to be, but it's trying to cash in on the success of Marvel it's not movies. Marvel. So yeah. I, I don't know. I think they'll be like, mm. there's not one talking raccoon <laughs> in this movie. <laughs> so I think That's it's the lower. Standard now. I think it's a lower. I'm going to go. I'll just go. I'll play it safe. Go with a straight chilling spesh 69. 69. All right. 75, 69. Rob's going to take it. This movie is not fresh. Um, it's not far from fresh, but it's not fresh. <laughs> it is certified or well, it is rotten. It um, is certified. <laughs> it is a 57% from our 120 critics. The critic consensus is although Brightburn doesn't fully deliver on the pitch black promise of its setup, it's still enough to offer a subversion of the superhero genre. Hey, that's interesting that they say that because 
Cesar was not having that line of thinking. No. Just yeah. I, I agree like, more with Cesar. I agree more with Cesar. Can we can we write like an autobiography and call it Not Far From Fresh, please? Not far from <laughs> not far from fresh. <laughs> the, the street. I street love that. Story. <laughs> yeah. I love that shit. So yeah, and I can't tell anymore. They took it away. I don't know how many critics rated it. What or what? It's gone. It's gone now. So Everything's kiddo. gone. You should Everything email them. Nothing. You should email them <laughs> yeah, and hey, complain. Hey, you guys not know that we do this? I'm probably the first person <laughs> to email you with a complaint, but here it is. You ruined our game. I know this is the internet and everyone is always happy about everything, but I have a complaint to make. Whoa. <laughs> Rotten Tomatoes. I'm, I'm sure you've seen the straight chilling documentary, Not Far From Fresh. <laughs> Not Far From Fresh. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag hard with us. Oh, man. I can't wait for that to be a real documentary that's rated rotten as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and the sub, the, definitely the 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 short, the whatever the aggregate score thing is going to say. This movie is far from fresh, or some this other situational bullshit. irony. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, let's get into the audience score now. And they have a new system where they verify because this is the internet, and we've gotten to that point. They verify through tickets. So if you want to leave a rating on. New, I guess, new movies? Because how would you do it with old movies? I don't know. If you want to leave like an audience score now, I think they verify through ticket stubs or something. I don't, I don't know. So the number's pretty low. It is just shy of 2,000, 1,949 um, on the user rating here. So let's start with Bob. First, what do you think the people are feeling about the bright burn? They feeling, they feeling the burn, Bob? I think they're going to be more forgiving than the critics for sure. I'll go with an 82. 82. Feeling the burn from Goth Bob. All right, Randy. Um, yeah, I also think that probably people are going to be a little more forgiving. They don't, you know, nah. nah. 75. We'll stick with that. 75 all right randy's gonna take it hey uh, unfortunately nobody chose the straight chillin special because it is in fact the straight chillin special ah! we're sitting at a beautiful 69 percent on the audience score one thing we didn't talk about at all i i mean it's on the poster that we're going to be giving away but um the mask we didn't talk about like his oh, yeah. mask or anything at all which i mean i guess i get it talk about yeah i get I get like well, like I get what they were trying to do with it, but it just well, it was I guess not interesting. There, I guess there was no need for it because he didn't no like, need. feel any remorse. So, like if yeah. if they had gone the Superman way, don't like, have one. Oh, like if he needs to rob a bank to like save his family farm, or like, or he actually felt bad about it, then of course he would wear and a mask. Everybody, he everybody, and he he's feels killing about it. Everybody he's killing knows exactly who he is. They're not like, oh yeah, no, yeah. who are you? Everybody he's knows. Not, nobody's shocked. Yeah, he's, except maybe the mom in the diner, or, or yeah, which was the best like the best sequence okay maybe but he doesn't care so it doesn't matter yeah don't care. <laughs> whatever okay so that is rotten tomatoes we go in where are we going now where are we going now i don't oh. know oh sorry yeah, going <laughs> trivia are we going hunting uh, Disneyland. Ra- randy is there trivia did you there's n- it's so new there's just really not a ton of trivia anything most of the trivia that I found has been, you know, references to other, you know, yeah. superheroes yeah. and things Probably like that. Probably old, old bitch gave us the most trivia. I didn't notice the uh, superhero like. I didn't either. Thing didn't either. Or whatever. Yeah. There was like there was a couple of references to super, which I haven't seen in years, but I caught up with that. Other than that, for the most part, it was. It was yeah. what you, what oh, everybody pretty uh, much picked out of it. Little bitch was our trivia this week, so we can do a little, a light, some light hunting, I suppose. Yeah, let's let's go light hunt, hunting. Let's go hunting real quick. Cooter of the week. Uh, who is the cooter of the week? Well, the cooter, and I hate to say it because I hate it when it's just like the villain is the cooter. Yeah. Of course, he does the things, but I mean, he hit he hit some elements. It's just some weak cooter work, you know. I don't even have a backup. Every, I need to write to James Gunn and say, "Look, guy, okay, we need to talk about the cooter." Okay, we need to we have need some some side cooters here, please. 
Just a um, couple cooters but, on the side. I mean, the kid in general, he <laughs> hit some pretty solid cooter marks. He's de- I mean, he's every thirteen year old boy. Yeah, every thirteen year old boy is a sexual deviant. If if you're not <laughs> surprised by this, then I mean, <laughs> surprise. <laughs> but I mean, he is creeping on this little girl. He definitely, you know, once he gets he's rejected, his porn. box are up. Yeah, he definitely's got some gut porn, which is really <laughs> weird. Um, <laughs> Uh, so he, he's hitting the mark on that. Um, but what else though? I mean, the smug arrogance, I guess he's like, I am superior. He doesn't give two shits about anyone. It, like as soon as he finds out then that he is an alien, I guess that's something we didn't talk about either is the mom actually tells him like, Oh, you're an alien. Um, and then that's when he kind of gets his superiority complex. And so he is definitely like a huge arrogant prick once he kind of finds that out. Um, he's not doing a whole lot of manipulation. Uh, well, uh, unless you, he's, I guess if you, he's trying if to intimidate about, people, you know? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. And if you'd think that maybe he was faking with his mom, like mom, I'm trying to do good. Like, cause sometimes I guess he kind of does play that like card or like, or like that I'm innocent or like you, I'm not really that bad or something. You know, maybe a little bit of that. And then a tire, uh, he wears his blanket around, I guess. He's rocking the Linus look. The mask doesn't make sense, so I guess you could point to that. But yeah, yeah, I guess if they had spent more time, he's hitting cooter like marks, making it or say he's hitting some marks. And I he's hate a well qualified cooter. Yeah, I hate when it's just yeah. like the villain. It's not. It's not like it's not a revelation cooter or anything like that. But I mean, co- a cooter's a cooter. You gotta, yeah, you gotta call him out. Call him when you see ending, it. Twist ending, just like the movie. Cooter's gonna <laughs> coot. 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 Yeah, coots. Coot's good, Boogie. Yeah. Boogie. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and now it's time for that official hotline scream. Oh, yeah, the hotline scream. Yeah. Uh, hotline scream. We do, have, we do have one voicemail this week uh, from our boy Michael. I'm um, calling in. He uh, he helms the Mike. the uh, Horror Apocalypse podcast. It's been a couple weeks, I think, since we've heard from him. Horror Apocalypse. Uh, Horror Apocalypse. Hor- yeah, you're right. You, I sh- you really that, need right. to enunciate that one. Yeah. Horror Apocalypse. Mm. Um, but if you yourself would like to call in and leave us a voicemail, you can reach us at 904-638-3231. Uh, let's go ahead and hear from Michael and see what he has to say. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Michael from Horror Apocalypse. It's been a few episodes since I've called in, and that's totally my fault. Um, I, I don't know. I get busy. I get home. Last thing I want to do is anything. But um, listen, I, I was just listening to y'all's um, episode, uh, the bonus episode where you, you worked with uh, Shortbox. Um, two things. One, it was great hearing Cesar. It was really cool hearing him again. Uh, and two, it kind of gave me my, my next question for you guys. I'm going to call in and pose a question. Uh, Bob, during your segment, you, or during one segment, you were talking about, uh, the Jacksonville part of Creep Show. And you mentioned how cockroaches are, you know, big for your big thing that makes you creepy kind of thing. Um, so that's my question for you guys. What scene from what movie, uh, disturbs you the most? What movie and why? And Bob, you can't use Creep Show again, so you got to come up with a new one. So, what would be your second most, uh, second most creepy, the second one that uh, disturbs you the most? So, once again, guys, what scene from a uh, movie disturbs you the most? Why and what movie is it from? So, yeah, good luck, guys. Great hearing from you again, and loving all the shows. You gotta, you gotta do more like twice a week. Okay, keep us busy, man. Have a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Michael. Ooh, tall order. <laughs> yeah, I know. If uh, if we didn't have jobs or like need to have jobs, I'd be down with that easily. Yeah. <laughs> if you guys want to pay us a living salary, this we can do that. <laughs> I will watch a horror movie and review it every single day. I'll, I'll review it Actually, every yeah. Day. Every day. Let's go. You guys could make that. Rob's happen. already. With Rob would be living the dream. I would be living the dream, <laughs> indeed. Vinegar strokes every day. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and by the way, you have to each we each get our own checks if we do it that way. Bob ain't handling the money at that point. It'll all go straight down the vinegar hole. <laughs> Just down the vinegar hole. That's the worst name for a strip club I've ever heard. 
Uh, <laughs> God damn. Holy shit. <laughs> Anyways, all right. Well, my, Bob, my, Bob, you Bob start just, us off. Bob you're just starting, swimming in the vinegar cartridges. hole. Sure, sure. Uh, right. Yeah. So, uh, so Michael. Yeah, his question was. Um, well, first he referenced the the creep show episode that we did with Shortbox. We were talking about the last segment where it, like cockroaches run amok. If you live in Florida or the dirty South in general, you're familiar with cockroaches. <laughs> I, fuck, I I hate them very much. They freak me out. Uh, anyway, his question was, uh, was, uh, what scene from what movie really creeps you out or disturbs you? I kind of had a few, it's hard to pick like one, like one ultimate scene. Um, but I know, so there's like this one scene that has caused me to walk out of a horror movie. It's like, I don't know that I've walked out of any other horror movie that I can think of. Um, but Justin, you were there with me. We went together to go watch the remake of The Hills Have Eyes, and there's this one like really messed oh. up, like terrible rape scene. And like halfway through that scene, we we're just like, you know, nah, and just we left. Like, just I still haven't finished watching that movie, but that's like probably one of the most disturbing scenes in any movie I've I've seen. And you know, that includes like all the crazy nonsense that was in like a Serbian film. I think that was still worse, personally. Um, also like if you want to talk about young, (laughs) that's true. Yeah, that is true. It was a while ago. Um, there's also this like one jump scare in the conjuring Two that every time I watch that movie, I know it's coming and it still makes me like scream out loud. (laughs) It's there's like, uh, is it when they start singing Elvis songs? (laughs) Yes, that's exactly right. No, it's like the old man ghost. He like jumps out from behind the television screen and scares a little girl. It fucking kills me every time. I don't know. Um, (laughs) And then also the I get like freaked out by like being stuck, like people being stuck in tight places. So there's that um, that scene uh, where the descent. Yeah, with the descent. Uh, the girl gets like stuck crawling, crawling through this tiny little wow, hole in the rocks. Yeah. And then also there's another one, uh, that Blair Witch movie that came out a few years ago where the girl's crawling through like a tunnel underneath the house. And yeah, she gets underneath st- the house. God, um, that shit freaks me out, son. That would suck. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. But th- those are kind of the, the teeth. W- the teeth, Bob. Yeah, I don't, re- I don't really want to talk about <laughs> the that. The teeth, boy. <laughs> From what if is you want to send Rob your teeth or pictures <laughs> of uh, your channel cosplay where you dress up in a bunch of teeth, send it to uh, <laughs> Rob's email or his home address, which I will share with you post tense. I actually do want to see that cosplay. It starts with 69, 69. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. That's the home send address. Us- but yeah, I have trypophobia. Look it up if you don't know that. If you don't know what that is, the, the, those are the holes. scenes that I had. Um, holes. Uh, what holes about you holes. guys? What uh, what did you guys come up with? Um, scary wise, I mean, I would say like so a lot of scenes from like the exorcist, like the spider stairs. And then, um, of course when like I disturbing wise, when she like, you know, like stabs herself in the cooch with the crucifix. I mean, that's really terrible. Um, so a classic, you know, exorcist and, um, the, I feel like one of the most like scary, like jump, scenes like from like a more contemporary movie it's like insidious i know there's like a lot of moments and insidious we're like oh shit like i remember being like i know when she like walks through the house and it's that classic like james wan back when he was like subtle about shit and there's like somebody <laughs> like in the you know like somebody in the closet beside them or like i don't i just remember there's like a lot of movies in that movie that maybe you're like oh shit oh fuck, oh god yeah. um so i would reference like just moments from insidious of being like actually like like jumping or like scared and and stuff like that that kind of stick out in my mind cool randy what you got um yeah i got a few few examples to 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 you guys' point like any sort of like rape scene is really disturbing to me um i have a hard time with those uh let's see um in terms of specific moments i wrote down a few and this is by no means a a full list of what i would like this 
bring that up, but he a few. Um, Babadook, that scene where she's hiding under the covers and he's right up on the roof and then sort of comes down on top of her. That one, that one got me pretty good a couple times. I was like, I, that whole movie is so great at causing like the right amount of tension to make a jump scare count. Um, there's that. There's um, oh, in The Exorcist as well. Anything, anytime you see Pazuzu's face, like the demon face, yeah, yeah, that shit. Yeah. Legitimately, like I remember being pretty young, even before I saw the movie, that image was just floating around the web, and I came upon it once, and I had like like hurriedly scrolled away <laughs> from it because it freaked me out. It really freaked me out, and like to this day, it's like it's not as bad as then, but like. Uh, it just bothers the fuck out of me. There is something really distressing about that face. Um, uh, going a little bit out, like on the edges of horror or outside of horror, you might say um, Requiem for a dream. That moment in oh, that yeah, movie, yeah. this is where I have an existential problem. That moment in the movie where Sarah Goldfarb, the older woman um, after like spoiler alert, some things happen to her and she does not end up well mentally. Um, and she sort of like walks out and is greeted by her old friends who she used to sit around and shoot the shit with. And they oh, just like, man, they start yeah. breaking down and crying. Cause she's like, not, she's not even there. You know, that and that's like, that's a drop when you mention. I that. know God, like, that's shit. That's so movie. fuck that movie, dude. <laughs> that's like an, an emotional fucking like knife to the back. It's, it's like just the most depressing. It's hard to think I've ever seen. And then uh, the last one I have written down is um, Mulholland Drive. Either of you guys seen that? No. Parts no? of it. There's this, there's this one scene, and it's like widely cited as one of the scariest moments <laughs> in like lists and shit. Is the diner scene, Winky's Diner, which is basically a, a Denny's clone. And you have these two guys having like that you haven't. I don't think you had met them before in the movie, if I remember right. And they're just having a conversation. And the guy's like, you know. What? I had this crazy dream where I've had it a few times and I'm at this restaurant and then I go out back and by the dumpster, there's some sort of homeless person or something that comes out and attacks me. And the guy's like, Oh, well let's go back there and see if he's there. (laughs) He's fucking there. And it's, it's a really notable piece of horror because it's or like for, for its horror, like effectiveness, because it does, it's so so David Lynch. It does like instead of having like a, a hard stinging music like note like ah, of somebody jumping out. Instead, it's just a slow build of like just a low, almost indiscernible rumbling like Whoa. like. And as he's sort of like easing his way up, and then when he shows up, the guy just passes out and might as well be dead. Like he's like, it's fucking crazy. Watch that shit. Um, it's an effective fucking scene. So yeah, there, there's a lot of like scenes that kind of freak me out. There's no like one thing I would point to as like the scariest thing I've ever seen though. Yeah, it's it's really hard to pick just one, but um, yeah, I think we had some some pretty interesting topics, some some creepy scenes. It's interesting, like both of you guys were talking about The Exorcist because everybody uses that yeah. as like a touchstone, as like the scariest movie ever to be made. But like, I don't know, it does it does hold up in a way, man. Over the years, over the decades, you know, it's still held up. It's uh, fucked up. Like the fact that when is that movie made in the seventies? Was it like seventy seven or something? Yes, seven. That sounds. I mean, right. like that's some fucked up shit for the seventies, man. Which I mean, you know, you're getting like some Texas Chainsaw <laughs> stuff, but I mean, the X seventy three. Seventy three. I mean, Damn, that's yeah. like some. I can't, imagine, dude. The fucking. Well, a Santanic panic one of the things <laughs> crew. <laughs> one of the, nice. One of the, my, one of the things like that I, I did. I, wild. One of the um, instances I didn't go over was also from the 70s, I think pretty early, maybe even late 60s, which is um, uh, the last house on the left, the original, where they have like the inciting incident of that, like every like revenge like movie like that is the rape and a murder of a young girl and it's set to like jangly bluegrass music <laughs> it's really disturbing to me that was 72 like, what the fuck? 72 Wait, what movie? Yeah. 72 uh, uh last house uh, on the left last house on the left. i've never oh, seen it oh yeah 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 and like deliverance too like that fucking kid playing the banjo and then like raping people and shit i don't know fucked up shit mm-hmm. <laughs> there's all kind of fucked up shit mm-hmm if you take away one thing from this podcast, it's that Ray Bad don't 
Don't like it. Yeah. That's, Not fans. Yeah. Learn that. If you don't know that already, at least take that please, away. If you don't know that already, please seek yeah. help and carry that not thought with you as you go. Yep. Mikey, Mikey likes it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's Sorry, go man. ahead and jump into some horror news. <laughs> extra, extra. Read all about it. All right. First things first, we definitely got to talk about that new trailer that dropped for Annabelle Comes Home. She's we com- got to. It's so hot. It's, <laughs> it's so, so hot. It's so hot right now. You can't even touch oh it. God, it's a hot potato. Oh, She's coming home on Jeez. June 26th, oh. which is like, like a month away, right around the Dude, corner. Best, best line in this trailer. Annabelle. What is it? What's what? the best line in this trailer? I don't know. What What are you talking um, about? It's when the I cop goes, know. nice doll. And then <laughs> Warren goes, that's what you think. That's what you think. <laughs> oh, Holy oh, shit. The, I was like, this is the route we're going? <laughs> this is... <laughs> <laughs> this, movie, this movie is going to be the Super Smash Brothers of the Waniverse. It's just a bunch of motherfuckers. They're DLCing fucking all sorts of disparate ghosts from all over the ghost world to come in and just be a part of a mega haunting. And you know, dude, they're just I I'm hope that's like, I hope is that's the what next it is. Movie gonna be the dude with the coins? That's all I think about when I see these yeah, movies. Exactly. Now. It's like what exactly. is gonna be what is it? Oh, coin guy. He's oh, we're gonna go back. I'm just so, like I'm so burnt out. The, it's um, like a cabin in the woods, but without the self awareness, and with like twenty <laughs> movies leading up to it. It's just it's like cabin in the woods, but it's just like it's uh, it's like Mister Monopoly Man, like just rubbing his fingers together, or like twirling his <laughs> monocle, like ah oh, yes. It's just that's, uh, that's, that's how you picture out. James Wan back <laughs> back b- back when he was subtle though, and made Insidious and The Conjuring. <laughs> Back when James Wan was subtle. I like that. But so so oh, yes. so far just in the trailers that have been put out for this movie, like we see they're setting up like a an evil monkey toy with like the, the crash symbols. They've, there's like a samurai character, there's a demonic werewolf looking thing, there's the bride that they coin have eyes. been talking about. Yeah. The coin eyes, they're calling him the, the fairy man, apparently. Oh my god. Oh, the fact that they all have names, fact, like yeah. the fact that you can well, look like yes. do a Google search and be like what monster? The the fairy man and dude, the bri- the James bride Wan. James Wan's newest. It's like dude, James Wan and his, whole, his whole like his whole like production crew or whatever. They just watch and listen to every episode of lore they get their hands on, and they're like, okay, that's a movie. That's, fr- that's part of the franchise now. The fairy man's like a thing. The fucking La Llorona was a thing, and they're just yeah, like, okay, plucking that out of uh, relative obscurity to turn it into a fucking uh warren fest so i don't care what the warrens have to do with the goddamn fairy man i gotta say after watching this trailer i don't know looks like it could be fun it better be fun because it's sure as hell not gonna be smart well (laughs) yeah the premise is even dumb like the warrens are just going to leave a babysitter (laughs) alone that she can unlock the door like that's the premise that's the premise i was probably unlock it i'm sure there's some excuse but i mean still but like leave your daughter with your uh, grandmother or something (laughs) take take her to somewhere else (laughs) they gotta go all in on it though that's at a church or something that's how this movie fails i think as if they like start going down that path where like shit's hitting the fan and then they shy away and they're like but no we got to keep it scary because the wannaverse right no 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 it it, just just be dumb and crazy i'd rather see like uh, yeah i would rather see like like some shoot backstage like chairs across the head moments me too (laughs) me too or something yeah I yeah, that. I feel like they're gonna pull. Door. I feel like they're gonna pull some of the punches in order to be like, oh, "What are they gonna do next time?" Like, like yeah. as far as like the ghost, like you know, they're gonna try to make like some other like fairy man movie or some kind of shit. So yeah. I feel like they're gonna like hold back, like, "Oh, what did, what can the fairy man really do?" Like, it's just like Thanos is in this fucking movie. You know <laughs> <what it> <laughs> I'm, I am done. Like, do we, I didn't see the La La Rona. I'm like, after the nun, I was just like, dude, this is not even it worth really, it. It's not worth it my really time. Shit, I'm good with that one. I'm like, 
like I, if, I, if I start to hear rumblings that it's on the upswing, then I'll give it another shot. And I don't like this. This isn't this is a lot of shit talking for it's only because we really were on board for a long time with this string of movies. Like we stuck with it and I just, we just yeah. have not been rewarded and it's become like horribly formulaic to the point where it needs a hard reset in the form of mortal combat between ghosts. <laughs> also, I, I like completely like keep forgetting. This isn't even the conjuring three. I, they're just like the same thing in my right. mind. I keep forgetting. This is not even the conjuring three, which is also coming out like soon next, next year. Yeah. Next fall. I think. Yeah. It was going to be this year though. Earth, it was right? going to be not gonna the drop. same. Fucking it was going to be. Yeah. That's why I so, keep, why is it's just like in my conjuring mind. I can't. Why is Annabelle so central? Yeah, this should be the Conjuring Three. It's Annabelle like, Three way, beat out Conjuring Three, which is kind of yeah, crazy. It's like why does Annabelle? It doesn't fucking matter. Yeah. We've talked about it. It's uh, all we have. It. The, 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 yeah. the 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 real kick in the dick, I think, is we all really do love a good James Wan horror flick. We always have. We've always yeah. spoken so highly there about it. Several. Yeah, I think and, that's the thing. And yeah. it just sucks that he just kind of produces and then they just churn these out because you know it, it's quick money and and it's just kind of a bummer overall. That's really wh- where we're coming He's, from he with it. The thing this, is, right? he no, can direct this, right? No, it's the same directing he's not even directing the conjuring three no the uh the director of uh, liar no, no, is no, no. doing the conjuring three yeah i don't even care then oh, yeah. care. that's yeah. that's yep that's the way it should be <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah nah, be directed it. by be directed by fucking like i don't know paul rubens or somebody just yeah. just, just pull, pluck somebody out of thin air and just make him direct it because i it's hope gonna have the i same hope effect. like our hereditary guy and our witch guy i hope they never go down this path because <laughs> they're keeping me like they it have become like, this like is... my new it was like you know when the conjuring came out it's like oh james Wan, like these two guys they're my new like superstars and old peel man that's like the new they're the new superstars yeah. of the war like fuck and james they definitely Wan. not fuck james Wan, but like i like i don't care no. he doesn't hold i don't care what they're anymore. doing these other well, the people thing is, like, like still doing have their whatever. integrity to them, I guess. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, they're still putting like a lot of like themselves into everything they produce. They're not yeah. outsourcing things so much, and the quality dips when you do that. The thing is, like, this is not the first time a horror franchise has out over sequeled itself into oblivion. But it's a shame that it's still happening with people that uh, people directing it who lived through that experience of having. Friday the 13th go completely bonkers and turn into horse shit for a while. And then like, and Friday and uh nightmare on Elm street and Halloween, like all like there's so many movie franchises, especially in the eighties that were birthed out of sheer, like let's make some money and people like, like to make fun of them now. And there's only the odd, you know, sequel here or there that you're like, yeah, that was pretty good. And or like, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I stand by that one. But like, do we like, do you guys really want to go down that road of just over making something to the point where it loses all of its impact and all of its heaviness, yeah. all its weight? So speaking of uh, horror sequels, uh, I've got some good news. Uh, the next, the next oh, piece, good cool. news. Next piece I want to mention here is um, Hallelujah, Terrifier Two has been funded. And is going to start filming this okay. fall. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Through the street. Oh, yeah. So we've got a, Thank God. a quick little blurb here as far as what the plot <laughs> is. So after being resurrected by a sinister entity, Art the Clown returns to Miles County where he must hunt Did down. Did he die? So oh, let's get him. let's get to that. Where he must hunt right. hunt down and destroy a teenage girl and her younger brother on Halloween. So it's still set on Halloween. Hallelujah. So from what I remember in that movie is that he just cannot die. Like he should have died. Yeah, that's what like I gets remember shot too. in the head and just gets back up no problem. So that's a or little I confusing. Don't him dying. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Um but uh, I do like the idea of him terrorizing children. Yeah. On Halloween. Are they children or are they like just brother and sister? Did they say they were children? It says teenage girl and her younger brother. So he's teenage. Not less, uh, less so than she's a teenager. Really going to be like 28. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. He's going to be him. Oh, no. So um, <laughs> the. Uh, <laughs> 
uh the the okay, director well, scratch that i i thought i was a little more excited than uh, i guess what i should have been leo leone uh i, I, I don't uh, uh, yeah, Leone goes on to <laughs> say the scope of Terrifier 2 is going to be 10 times bigger than the original. It's going to be the merciless, no holds barred follow up. That's going to make that it we all <laughs> want. So, um, <laughs> I, I think he works better he probably in more smaller, it, intimate it, like places. Potentially. Potentially. It's just going to, it's just going to be like slicing ladies, coochie to throat like 12 times in a row, I guess. <laughs> It's more, so it's better. Well, oh, man, that, that, it's more I'm excited. Slices. I'm excited for it. <laughs> Rob, Rob well, likes his cooch slices. Oh, you. come on, <laughs> come Let's on. Let's move on. Yeah, oh. <laughs> starting to go down a <laughs> shitty path. Terrifier. Well, hopefully, it, hopefully, it's better than the first for my opinion, for my tastes, but yeah. I kind of doubt it. Yeah, I, think I like. I, I think that first one's got its charms. I don't. I don't know. Maybe it could be better, but it's. Eh, I'm not hopeful. Well, <laughs> hate, hope. haters gonna hate. Cooter's gonna coot. <laughs> the last bit of last bit of news here. So Zack Snyder, he's going back to zombie movies. He's making another zombie movie. It's uh, this one's gonna be called Army of the Dead, and it's gonna be a Netflix joint. I think we talked about it once on the show before, um, but they started casting. Uh, Dave Batista is gonna be uh, headlining this joint, and um, oh, Ella really? Ella Ella Purnell was just cast. I'm not totally sure who she is, um, but she's gonna be in it. Um, so the, uh, the plot is as follows. The adventure is set amid a zombie outbreak in Las Vegas, during which a man assembles a group of mercenaries to take the ultimate gamble, venturing into the quarantine zone to pull off the greatest heist ever attempted. Um, so yeah, Zack Snyder, he, <laughs> he says there are no handcuffs on me with this one. Netflix, I guess just wrote him a check and said, make a damn zombie movie. So, oh, yes, I'm sure it'll be great. I don't <laughs> Uh, <laughs> what could go Zach, wrong? I don't. I mean, he did that one, and it was like a solid zombie. The great. remake, um, Dawn of the Dead. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. love Dawn of the Dead. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, so I, I mean, he he could be. I like. I don't. When I think of like Zack Snyder going book wild, I'm like, I don't necessarily think like good. <laughs> like that's not the <laughs> me either. Yeah. My mind. <laughs> me either. But I know. I don't it's know. Be I guess six we'll hours see. long. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the thing. It's like that dude doesn't seem to know how to rein himself in. So, I I don't know. Uh, giving him free reign seems kind of like the backwards thing to do. Yeah, but I don't know, we'll see. Yeah, it'll be one of those Netflix mo- Netflix movies where you're like, yeah, it was okay. <laughs> <laughs> dude, yeah, that's Lu- it. I'm pretty lukewarm on that. That movie. is it. Maybe Anthony will tell uh, Zack Snyder that we hate his movie one day. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Fingers crossed. It's straight killing. <laughs> boys, really hate your shit. Hey, at least, you know. Any he would, press is good press. Big, hey, boys. He would just say, <laughs> he would just say, <laughs> who? <laughs> you know, a straight yeah. chilling crew. Uh, Hashtag hard with us. Hashtag hard with we're, us. We're the haters. We're the hater community. We have here. claimed that hashtag. I mean, it's blown up. I'm sure. <laughs> oh yeah, haven't oh. <laughs> hasn't been verified. Yeah. Remains to be seen, but I'm sure. Dude, if we could somehow take over hard with us, but people think it's like some kind of weird porn hashtag, but it's really just our hashtag. I, that's I mean, the it's key. not a stretch. That's key right there. Think that. <laughs> you're just really that's not the natural thing that your brain. We got to get into the adult uh, industry. That's how we make it big, boys. Not, not doing us any favors here. <laughs> <laughs> really not. Uh, that's it. That's all I got for the news. That's going to do it for us here this week at Straight Chilling Headquarters. We're going to be back next week with a brand new show. We're going to be talking about another new movie, Godzilla, King <gasps> of Monsters. Oh, Gojira. I always think of that like oh, in it, I, 1997 shit. or whatever. No, 99. Godzilla 2000? Oh, <laughs> that the 99. Thinks it's like, what is she thinking? Like Gojira or something? Gojira. Yeah, what? some somebody <laughs> somebody something. does say it. Yeah. From 1999, I, it's just that white bitch. Uh, <laughs> Gojira. That white bitch. <laughs> 
Good Lord. <laughs> uh, so until next week, please rate, review, and subscribe to us on iTunes. You can follow us on Twitter at str8 underscore chilling. We are on Instagram at straight chilling podcast. You can send us an email through our website, straight chilling podcast.com. If you want to join our Slack channel, let me know on any one of those social media platforms I just mentioned, and I'll send you a link so you can join in on the fun. We talk about the movie of the week as well as various spooky tv shows we've been talking about some game of thrones talk about some joe bob briggs talk about comic books talk about all kinds of fun stuff all week long uh watch justin on twitch hit us up on youtube for the behind the scenes stuff and definitely make sure to comment on this week's video if you want to win that hot bright burn poster that all the way poster baby all the way from korea also, i also mm. forgot to mention Burning a hole in your eyes and yeah an easy way to find it too is if you go to the playlist it'll be in the behind the scenes playlist easy easy way as well sweet deal uh i think go. i think that's about it all you sweet babies take care and until next week as always everybody please keep chilling oh shit <laughs> Thank you.